I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 1st of October, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leo, Nicaragua. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Today is Saturday, and I have an extremely, extremely tight schedule. Today, as I am starting the day, first of all, I slept in with the dogs, so that was great, and starting the day doing a house tour that I'm going to bring you guys on, so that's excellent, uh, for one of my regular viewers who has been on the show, Frank, who was on uh, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, and uh, he's wanted me to go look at this house, so we got it uh, so that I could go film it today. So I'm going to take you guys around, give a little bit of a explanation about that first thing this morning, and then I have a, I'm really far behind because this week's been busy, but it got better yesterday because if you watch the show, you know, I was having kind of a heavy week, uh, not not terrible, just business stuff, not like personal things, and uh, ooh, here's the thunder, and uh, uh, so today is a lot of catch up on the videos, which is why some of today is a little bit disjointed. Um, and then, uh, so, so videos this morning for the house, which is great. I, I love doing house tours and seeing houses and stuff. So that's a lot of fun. That's a really cool thing. And so doing house showings for people is like a really cool way to get to do things that I like. And it makes, I think, great content for the show because it's something different. Like, where do you get to see that stuff of real houses with real commentary and not someone who's trying to sell them? Because I'm, I'm looking at the houses. I am not an agent. I'm not involved other than carrying a camera around and talking, right? So that's a lot of fun and I think it's unique for you guys. Um, and then tonight, uh, seven o'clock ish at Valenti's, which is a pizza place. Valenti's really quickly, it's something it took us a little while to understand, is a pizza restaurant here in Leon, like Valenti's Leon, but it turns out they're a chain all across Nicaragua and actually they're the pizza place that you can generally get their pizza in the gas stations or the super minis. So if you go to like, I'm not sure which one it is or both, AM, PM or Super Express, but the big chains, sometimes they'll say, you know, you can get hot dogs or nachos or pizza. And when they do that, every time I've seen it, the pizza that they have is Valenti's. Oh, I did a thumbs up. I'm the one who wasn't on camera. And uh, uh, so they're, they're a okay pizza. Um, it's been a long time since I've had it. All right, future Scott here cutting in because I need to correct something here. I had not had Valenti's pizza before. I had only heard about it and did not remember that I'd never had it and thought it was just, anyway, it was fantastic. So I'm gonna tell you about the pizza later, but just in case you don't get to the end and you only get to here and you're like, oh, he said Valenti's is only okay. No, it's fantastic. It's not a style I normally go for. It's a very different style than we normally get. It's a thicker crust. It's a little bit, um, and maybe like a cheese isn't as good. I got it with lots of veggies. Fantastic. In fact, I have some leftovers. I'm about to go heat them up. Really good. So I say it's just okay. No, no, no. Different style. Not my everyday pizza, but really good. Worth a trip. And you can get it in several different cities like Chinandega and I think Esteli. All right, back to the actual content. Uh, but Larry Emerson is playing there. So Alan wanted to go, of course, because Larry Emerson is fantastic. Uh, so we're going to go see him. I saw him a few weeks ago at La Antigua, but Alan couldn't make it that night because I think he was in the States or had just gotten back or something. So we're going to go see them play tonight. And uh, that's going to be the day. And then after that, the plan is I'm going to come home and the kids and I are going to uh, watch Stranger Things because Luchana is enjoying it. She enjoys picking it apart, but we started watching it together last night and we're going to try to make it through the end of the first season tonight. So we're going to be up late. Just it is how it is. Sometimes you need to suck it up, stay up late and watch movies with your kids. So that is what is going on today. It's going to be a busy one. I'm going to order in some sua for dinner tonight because we have no groceries in the house. Uh, and it's always a struggle finding things to eat. I got to remember to keep a notepad with different food we like at different restaurants. So when I'm pitching things to the kids, what about this? What about that? It's not a starting over from scratch every time. And now that we have Hugo, we really, Ugo, we really have so many more options. Um, and that's making me happy. So looking forward to doing that tonight as well. All right, I'm off to record some other days. So if you see this hat and this shirt, that means I'm doing it right after this one because I'm a little bit behind. All right, off we go. All right, we're gonna enter from the side door. So the garage door is down there, the extra window is here, and then the corner is up there. We're just coming in the side door here and I've already been around the space, so I know what I'm gonna be showing you. This is pretty cool. So I'm gonna turn around and show you the space. We're entering into the living room. This is normal. The living room or sala, uh, the salon, is the front room. So this is the front window, the front corner, and the side window, that I, and then the side door that I just came in. This is a really large salon, big open space. This would have a lot of air. Now this is a two bedroom, two bath, as it is currently set up with a lot of options. 
So this is, this is a significant space uh, that is all, it's basically an open concept. And I want you to pay attention to some of the woodwork. Some of these designs are really nice. Now, sorry, it's dark in here, so we get a lot of flare from the sunlight. But this is, when we go through it, you're gonna see these archways are some beautiful woodwork. Uh, it's, it's some classic Nicaraguan design. Now, there's things that are gonna wanna be updated. You're probably gonna wanna update the ceiling, for example. It's, pure, it's completely functional. It's not unattractive, but it's also, the, it's also a, not a expensive construction. The floors are tile and seem to be in good shape. You'd probably want to resurface them a little bit. <laughs> I think this is meant for like the seating area to designate where it's going to be. A little bit silly, but we're going to pop in here. Now this is a little bit dark, but I think you're going to be able to see it. There's another door here, so you'd be able to open up. This is directly into the street though, so <laughs> it's a little bit odd. This is the master. It is a good size, but it does not have an attached bathroom at this time. So that's important to note, uh, which is which is pretty common in these types of structures. But that is a good size bed with those are large wardrobes. So this is this is a good size space right here. I'm just going to back up a little bit and then come through. And then we have another small room here. So this is a second bed. Oh, I'm wrong. There's three bedrooms. I don't know how I missed that. There's three. Uh, and then this is open air though to the next bedroom. This is an all open air current house. Of course, the expectation is you would not be air conditioned in a traditional house. You can open up the top portions. You get a lot of air flowing through between the rooms. Uh, and it's, this is definitely a spot with a lot of airflow. So we're going to come back into the salon and we're going to show the third bedroom here. Now, of course, that second bedroom in the middle could be turned into a bathroom. This could become uh, a master suite over there. Now, this is interesting. Um, not many people in the US are gonna see this. So this is open air across there and there and there. Very common. You will see that in houses all over Leon. So that is to be expected. This, however, is different. Instead of standard windows, this is concrete with the open uh, airflow. So this gets a lot of air all the time and it's designed so you can't look in unless someone in here was standing on a uh, ladder or something. Um, but you can put a screen over it, which is what they did. Typically you would just leave it open though um, because you really don't need screens. And you'll notice there's no screens on the others. We don't really do screens here in Nicaragua. Now before we go outside, I want to take you through this archway. I love this. This step here is gorgeous. It, it looks like something that out of a small chapel uh, in the middle of this house. So it really matches this gorgeous woodworking up here. This stuff is very solid. It's really nice. So that's that's cool. This is the kitchen, which is a little bit like a galley style. I don't. I have no idea if the appliances would come with it. Probably not. That is not common. But you have a lot of space to put in a modern kitchen here and. Uh, that is the window that's currently boarded up uh, to the outside because the house is not in use. But if you open that up, you'll have sunlight and a lot of airflow. And you have a lot of windows here going into the courtyard. So this is an open, airy kitchen for sure. Now, as we come through the kitchen, this is currently the master bathroom or the, the primary bathroom. So this is a little bit different than you would expect and probably a design feature you would want to change, I think. And you're going to see me filming. Hello, everyone. Um, so currently a sink, a mirror. This is completely functional. This is a pretty standard style bathroom you would easily find in an older American house. My grandparents would easily have this bathroom. And again, you have high ceilings, in, which is nice. And you have airflow there. And we're going to show that room in a, in a minute. And then you have airflow up here. So this is one, this is the only major bathroom in the house and the only one that is currently part of the house. So my personal feeling is that you would want to convert one of the spaces into uh, another bathroom inside the house and make it a two bedroom. Uh, two bath with this being the one that we just showed you being a uh, house bathroom, you know, for the guests and, and everyone in the house and then a master uh, for the people who live here. Now, I'm going to go into the courtyard from the salon rather than from the kitchen. So we're going to go down the really cool steps again and come around so you can kind of get the full backyard experience. This is actually a beautiful backyard. The tree back here is fantastic. Check this out. We're going to look up at the tree. Yeah, that is a very awesome mature tree. And I love the brickwork around the base as well. So this space is an outdoor garden. And this, as you can see, this is the airflow into that bedroom. So very airy. We got nice plants back here. We have a great area for an extended garden. 
you got a great area to potentially, these are potted, so you could move these around and um, make like a seating area uh, or, or any kind of mixed use. You could easily throw dinner parties out here, which would be a popular thing to do with the kitchen being right here. It's a perfect spot to do it into. So all that opens up and uh, this, is, this is a great space outside. Now, a lot of people who would use this would have a car. You don't, you don't need one here in Leon, but uh, you're often gonna want one. We have a built-in grill currently. I also wanna point out, these walls have, um, I forget the name for it, but the rebar sticking out of the top, so they are designed to go up. This could become enclosed or heightened uh, if that was a, uh, that would be a very major construction project and this tree would need to be accounted for because you definitely don't wanna take it down. Uh, but it does have potential to do more with it a lot of different things uh, that could be done. Now, this is the garage door. We've seen it from the outside. There is a door in it, and then the whole thing opens so a car can come in here. And this is designed for two cars to be able to fit in here. One would sit here, and one can come in and turn around and sit here. Obviously, that would be annoying to do every day, but if you had a car or a motorcycle or something that you didn't use very often and you wanted to have a spot to put it, you can. Uh, and then your daily driver would be here and be able to go right in and out. All right, this back room is kind of the bodega. So you have a small bathroom in the back and a small storage room here, again with open air up there. And then the same thing is going to be over here. This is, goes into the kitchen. Sorry, it's very dark in here and I've not stepped into here to know what's here. Oh, there's a full shower in here, excellent. So this is obviously you would want to um, re redo this room completely, but you could make it into something pretty nice even if you wanted to keep the bathroom and storage as it is, uh, it, would, it would be very easy to turn it into something quite nice rather than the utility space that it is now. Um, but it also could be completely removed and turned into another bedroom or something of that nature. You really could do just about anything with it, but there is a lack of bodega space in the house as it currently stands. However, personally, um, I would look at things like this space here as being perfect to put in another structure that comes maybe twice as deep as the as the kitchen and have a really nice dedicated high modern bodega over here use it for really heavily locked storage for all the things you want to keep really safe maybe raise it just a little bit so any water stays above and that would be because otherwise that space i mean you could do a lot of things with that space but being next to the driveway but you know it's not going to be hit because you have to come up this ramp so it's not in the way of the door in any way so i'm going to step back as much as i can Try to give, I mean, the GoPro does a pretty good job of getting the, the long throw of the space, but this is, this is a very nice, very, very nice open courtyard space. And this style is just gorgeous, this, this whole kitchen layout. You could imagine the same kind of style existing in, in Italy or Spain uh, in an outdoor garden space. And we're in a, a more, more quiet uh, area of La Barria. We're actually only one block from my house in La Barria. And so um, it's, but it's one block farther from the church. So it's a lot more quiet. It has a lot less traffic than uh, my place. And, uh, but it sits on a really nice corner. So the street that we're on, on this side is extremely, extremely quiet. I essentially never see cars out here, but there's lots of kids who play in the street all the time. Uh, and uh, that's looking south. That is the road going east there, that's second going east, and we'll see a car go by. There is some traffic on second, but very few, and it moves very slowly, and this side road really gets none. It does get traffic from the dogs, of course, my dogs most of the time, but some other people's too. Buenos dias! And uh, that is the final view of the house. So, this is a great example of, of the architecture and style uh, that you are likely to be able to find in La Borio. Um, obviously, this is a corner house, so you have to keep that in mind if you're looking at other houses, like corners are different and, and will be designed slightly differently because of that, but as a corner house, I think this is decently indicative of a classic style that's well-maintained, but it's not modernized, so if, if you're looking for a more modern house, you would want to make quite a few changes, and that's fine. Very easy to do, lots of great bones here uh, to be able to, to make changes, and, and I wanna get a close-up of some of this wood, right? Because this is the kind of stuff that's hard to replace and hard to do again. Uh, Maduro is very expensive today, and so, and the craftsmanship is obviously expensive, so doing this again would be something hard to do, doable, of course, but, but hard to do, um, but gives you a good starting point, and obviously everything is, is very solid structure that's meant to last. 
Uh, and so modifying something like this to modernize, to have um, a really good dream home is, is extremely doable. Uh, and if you're interested in a very classic lifestyle, if you're looking to really live like a traditional Nicaraguan family and use the house as it is, it's very little work would be needed to make it uh, in really good shape. Um, in that style, you know, if you're happy with the shared bathroom out beyond the kitchen and don't mind that the bedrooms are not air conditioned, those kinds of things, then it's it's essentially moving ready from what I see. I mean, obviously you'd want to spend a weekend getting it ready. Um, but if you want to air condition and and redo a lot of things, put in a brand new modern kitchen, for example, that's going to take some time and work. But absolutely, the structure is going to support that and the location is pretty unbeatable. That's the biggest thing in Nicaraguan real estate is the location. Every location is so unique and that's one of the things that makes it so different from um, the US or Canada or something like that where there's a lot of, well, this house is you know like this and the one down the block is almost identical and the difference between living in one and the other, almost exactly the same. Here, every block is very different. There's a lot of character, every, every barrio, every quadra within the barrios, very unique. So uh, you really are making a choice based on location and the trees because you can't replace those and then and then from there really deciding what you want to do as a structure because structures can be changed but locations cannot all right that's on as i'm walking back from the house something that i didn't note while i was in there and i thought of after i stopped the video is that so that ceiling that you see in there is a it's obviously a drop ceiling there is a traditional colonial ceiling above it and that's something you could go any direction with, but there's a potentially much higher ceiling to be had. Um, and personally, I find that much more attractive, but it's a lot harder to deal with a colonial ceiling. Um, it's, it's really high to do maintenance. It requires a bit of stuff. It's harder to seal. So if you want to do air conditioning, it can be a real pain. That's a reason that a lot of people do the drop ceilings. Um, it, it can be that it wasn't made in an attractive way. And so maybe the drop ceiling is hiding that. There's a lot of unknowns up there, uh, but pretty traditionally, a lot of these houses, I'll just show the one I'm walking past. You can see here where the roof comes down, often the interior can go straight up with that and you don't need to have something separate below. Because we don't traditionally air condition most of the spaces, there's no need to worry about that really tight seal and definitely no need to worry about insulation. So that changes how things work quite a bit and uh, allows you to play with really high ceilings, with the roof uh, being the ceiling directly, that kind of thing. And uh, could be a way that just change the house for me, I think I probably would raise the ceiling. Uh, I would prefer that at least in the salon. In the uh, bedrooms, I would typically want air conditioning, but there's so much open air in there. Having lived here as long as I have, if I had really good fans, I might be okay not having air conditioning in those spaces, but I always have to have air conditioning somewhere because there are just days where you need to escape but that could be something that's added somewhere else. Um, and of course, because it's a concrete house, there's always the potential of building another floor on top to be a major construction project, but it is, it's concrete. So in general, you would be able to go up. Of course, I'd have to talk to an architect about that, but that is, that is generally something that can be done. All right. Future Scott again. I am back to tell you about the rest of the day. Sorry for having to cut in. Actually, I kind of like these future cut-ins. I've done it a couple times now and it kind of works out because sometimes I get behind on editing and so I'm able to come back and do it later. Anyway, so it's Friday. Friday night, uh, the kids were like, we really just want to do our own thing for the most part. So not a big deal that I wanted to go out and uh, Alan was like, yeah, uh, Larry Emerson, who we love to see, amazing rock artist. Uh, he had his small group. Sometimes we see him. Um, if you saw my recent stuff from El Sopan's La Antigua, we went and saw La Antigua 1620. We went and saw the show there, and he had his whole band, or at least a larger set of them. And then tonight is just him and his, his drummer, um, or his percussionist, I guess. Um, and they sing together, so, so a lot of times just the two of them do things. And uh, so it was just a small group tonight. They drove up from Managua and they were playing at the Lentis. Uh, so Alan's like, this, it's an early show at seven o'clock. Do you wanna go? I'm like, that sounds great. And pizza sounds good and I had no dinner plans. So I cooked for the girls before I left. I got them all set with dinner um, and uh, then took off at about 6.40 to walk up to Valenti's. Easy walk for me, so that works out really well. Uh, met. Um, Ellen and Anna there. I actually got there ahead of them. They had uh, quite a bit of rain tonight. So I was walking the whole way in the rain, but it was so nice and cool 
e it didn't get that like super hot after the rain uh, muggy thing. No, it was really nice. It was a beautiful evening. We were talking about one, how we've adapted to living in Nicaragua because Alan's well over a year and I'm well over a year and a half. And with all that time here, this warm kind of humid weather is actually like, we're starting to be outside and being able to do things all the time and be, be comfortable. And especially if we go to other cities, Managua a little bit and like Matagalpa or Esteli, my gosh, they're almost chilly. Not quite, I still like to wear shorts, but they're not, not too hot at all. Um, and so we were just talking about how comfortable it was. Valenti's has a beautiful outdoor courtyard space with garden area. That's where uh, Larry set up and played. Uh, we both got pizza, Anna got spaghetti, and uh, I'm really impressed with the pizza. I got the vegetarian with mushrooms. It is basically bread just piled high with vegetables and you know some cheese and sauce. Excellent, like so good. I was so impressed, it completely surprised me uh, because Dominica and Paul keep telling me, ah, it's nothing special. No, it was special. Now, I'm not saying it's as good as Hawassas del Sabor. That remains my favorite pizza in town. This, though, is probably a, a decently easy second. And the nice thing is, is that most of them are fairly similar. Emmanuel does a really bready pizza, more like my mother's homemade pizza. That one's a little bit different than the others. But Oasis and Jip Jop and Jam and those, they all have a very similar Nicaraguan style pizza, which is good. And some of them like Oasis do the stuffed crust. I like that. And then others like um, um, at Food Rock Ave, they have, at Rock Munchies at Food Rock Ave, they do kind of what I think of as a gourmet pizza, like it's thinner and uh, it's, it's a different style. I like that too, but um, no one does a Western New York style, which is sad for me, that's what I really want. I have yet to see anyone do a Chicago style, which I don't really want, so that's fine. Um, there are certain things you really can't get, and we do have Pizza Hut, of course, which is not that great, but they're okay. And if you're having that hankering for that deep dish Pizza Hut special pizza, you can go do that. But anyway, so our dinner at Valenti's was fantastic. And of course, Larry's concert was fantastic. What was really nice though, is he started at seven. Well, nice for us, cause you know, we're old. He started at seven and did roughly a two hour straight set. There was no break. So we were there from right like seven to nine, nine fifteen, something like that. Did one really long set. And it was perfect because we sat down, he started like almost right away. We had really good seats. We weren't the front row, so it's not quite so loud, but we were right there, open air to him. And uh, the food was fantastic. It took a little while because they're really busy. It's a big restaurant um, and they were full for the most part. Um, so it took a little while to get our food, which is great. We're listening to the concert, had a few beers uh, and um, enjoyed our dinner, got leftovers to go, hung out, watched the concert, wrapped up at a reasonable time and so it was perfect. It wasn't like it went on so long that we were exhausted. It didn't go so late at night that we were falling asleep. It was like just a perfect mix of the right time to get dinner, the right length of a show that we'd like to see. Because this isn't like going to a concert at the auditorium somewhere where you make like a huge event of it. This is, hey, Larry's playing in town tonight. Let's, uh, let's go see him, right? And combine it with dinner. It's almost like it's, it's a dinner show, right? Because we can go out and do live music five nights a week if we want to, um, Having it be at a more reasonable time and a more reasonable length actually is kind of perfect in a lot of, a lot of ways. And Robert, uh, Roberto Reyes plays around town and does something similar, often a bit later, but he often does these reasonable length sets because he's doing it every night, right? It's not like traveling to some faraway place and putting on a big thing and packing the house. It's part of the, the dinner experience in a lot of Nicaragua. It's just something that people do. Uh, so we had a really nice time. Valenti's was great. The concert was great. That was that was just that was right. So thank you, Alan, for finding out that he was there and inviting me because that was that was really a good evening. Um, we would need to look for those more often. And Valentis is going to be on our regular rotation now, I guess when when Paul and Dominica aren't around because they're they're not like that excited about it. I want more of that pizza for sure. And I want to take the kids sometime to see if they like the pizza because they tend to like different things than the rest of us. 
So sometimes we find winners and sometimes we do not, but they don't want to try my veggie pizza. Neither of them like the millions of veggies uh, piled high on a pizza thing that I like. I don't get that that often. Often I just get a cheese or a cheese and pineapple. Uh, but sometimes when I find a really good veggie, that's what I want and this was that. So that whole additional set of food craving items that I now have handled. So very happy about that. Okay. After I got back from that, and that's another reason why I wanted to get back early, I like to get back and hang out with the girls because they like to do things relatively late at night. And today, Luciana came to me and said, I'm ready to start watching Stranger Things. And I'm like, I want to watch it with you. Uh, so we started, I believe tonight is when we started watching first season of Stranger Things, um, which she has never seen. She knows the plot and stuff because you, you can't hide from it uh, in this day and age. Um, but she's never seen it. And Liesl and I have watched the entire series together. Dominic has not seen the whole thing yet. So Liesl and I are the only ones who've seen everything. I've seen all of it more than once, except for the very latest episodes that just came out. Uh, and and Liesl's seen it all once. So this is Liesl's second time through. This is probably my fifth time through. Uh, but, the, but it's really cool that Luciana wants to do this. So I'm very excited about that. So that was our evening. Once I got back, we probably put in three or four hours of binging the first half of the first season of Stranger Things, uh, the three of us, Liesl, Luciana, and I. So that was a very special evening for us. Lots of fun. The girls made popcorn and uh, all kinds of things. It was, it was cool. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Put your comments below. Ask your questions. What pizza do you like? Have you been to Valenti's? What's your favorite pizza in Nicaragua? Your favorite pizza, which I'm, I'm going to do an episode of my favorite pizza in, in Nicaragua. I'm not sure that I've said what it is on this show. There is one I like so much. I need to go there, but it's really far away from here. Uh, what's your favorite pizza in Leon? Um, I want to know. And uh, if you want to support the show, check down below. There's a link to buy me a coffee. And otherwise, share with your friends. I will see all of you tomorrow.